Incoming message. Frederick Lewis, captain within the True Sons ranks and right-hand man to General Anderson. Age, 40. Field data and intercepted communications detail Lewis's and the True Sons' plans in Washington, D.C., as well as their involvement with the Black Tusk and an even bigger threat. Lewis's dossier mentions that he grew up on the ocean, spending summers on his father's fishing boat, rescuing tourists who had gotten themselves in trouble off the coast of North Carolina. Those summers would shape the man he would become, as Lewis would picture himself a savior, the one person who could defeat the sea and bring a lost soul home. He would join the Coast Guard fresh out of high school and work his way up to their search and rescue team. At some point, his wife wanted to move to Kentucky and build a homestead. In time, Lewis would give in to his wife's dreams, financing the move using the property value of their old fishing shack. A year later though, Lewis became bored of pretending to be a farmer and joined the Kentucky National Guard. Unfortunately, two years after that, his wife would have an affair with the young man they hired to help around the farm. When Lewis learned about his wife's infidelity, he grew eerily quiet. He packed a bag, got in his truck with his dog Ransom, and drove back to North Carolina to move back in with his father. There he would rejoin the Coast Guard in an attempt to rebuild his life. But then the green poison was released and he was called to support the JTF effort in DC. Lewis would carry with him the anger, pain, and resentment associated with his failed marriage. But instead of dealing with these internal issues, he would often pass them on to the people he was tasked to lead and care for. Taking a moment to switch to the Black Tusk, it became apparent that the BTSU's strength was diminished after the events on Liberty Island. It would be Fei Lao who introduced a solution to their lack of manpower. Making use of Keener's rogue network, she would connect Bard and Schaefer to rogue agents with ties to local factions. Through one of those rogues, Lynette Dusk Edwards, a fragile truce was formed between the True Sons and the Black Tusk. This truce wouldn't last long. When we managed to track down Edwards and eliminate her, the fallout of her death would be the catalyst that forced the True Sons to dissolve their alliance with the Black Tusk. With their list of allies growing thin, Anderson and Lewis started preparing an operation in D.C. Captain Lewis, we ready for homecoming? Just a few things to take care of here and I'll be on my way. Advance team is already on location. Lieutenant Chang's delivered and we have more than enough supplies for the party. That's great news. When Major Castillo got to D.C., he recorded some very emotional reports. We decided to make some of them public. No greater recruiting tool than a civilian who found purpose with the true sons. Careful, Captain. You keep delivering work this good? I might think you're after my job. <laughs> Not to worry, General. I hate the office politics. Working with the team, that's where I belong making sure the trains run smoothly and we all come back safe. That's where I know I can be of service. Leadership support roles and infrastructure. That's the work that fuels me. We need people like you, Captain. That's the thing about the Division. A bunch of lone wolves with no real infrastructure and alliances. They were set up to fail. Hire a bunch of specialists, train them to use another to solve their problems. This is what you get. You can't depend on someone and build trust if you only talk to them when you need something. People like that are unwilling to acknowledge their shortcomings or ask for help until they're already in trouble. This is why I knew following you and Ridgeway was the right call. He was proactive. He was willing to make the tough calls because he saw where the road was heading. And now that he's gone, we will finish the journey together and bring our cause to every state in the nation. Good luck in D.C. These plans would not be without their hiccup. Status report. We are getting ready to take the network, but there have been some unexpected roadblocks. Increased instability in the power grid, surges and blackouts, some data anomalies, insecure comms, and increased brute force attacks. Some of my men are reporting that they have seen some odd lights and feel like they are being watched. I thought the stress was getting to them. 
but the reports are coming from all times of day and from folks I trust. Major Xander is looking into it, but I don't know that our methods will yield the results we're looking for. There is something eerily familiar with these anomalies. Regardless, it seems communications between Lewis and Anderson suggest that the True Sons were looking to regain control over DC. Obviously, we couldn't let that happen, Agent. So we crumbled the four pillars of Lewis's advanced team. Castillo, Daniel, Chang, and Xander. And as a result, the True Sons threat is marginal at this point. But it seems there may be a bigger problem to deal with. At Anderson's orders, Lewis led an armored convoy to the Jefferson Trade Center. Lewis, what's your ETA? Should be arriving at the party by sundown tomorrow. Negative. I need you there now. We've got a location, there's movement. Looks like they are getting ready for an extraction. We need to head them off at the pass. Permission to take main roads and make a loud entrance. Permission granted. This will put us on the division's radar. It was inevitable. Maybe this time they'll actually see what we've been up against. I hope you're right. Frankly, if they haven't figured out what's going on by now, I don't think they ever will. Upon our arrival, we were faced with the aftermath of a gruesome battle. Lewis, however, was still alive and filled us in. This is Captain Lewis. Black Tusk have taken Jefferson Train Center. We need backup. Lewis, this is Kelso. Put down your weapons and surrender. The Division will take care of the Black Tusk. It's not the Black Tusk you should be worried about. Have your team meet me inside. Watch out for the recruiter. The what? Oh, you'll see. Trust has to be earned. I don't trust this guy. Don't shoot him. I want to know what he's up to. Recruiter? Hmm. Obviously, Lewis knew something that we didn't. And it behooved us out of a mutual need to partner up. You know the saying, Agent. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Finally. What's your status? Armed and ready. But the lone survivor of my team. If you want us to help you, we need you to secure the Shade Node. You don't trust me to have your back? I don't trust you to have my front. That trust has to be earned. Captain, defend the node. We can take care of Black Tusk. Lewis would hold up his end of the bargain. Agent Kelso, the True Sons have secured the entrance to the Shade Node. Your comms are secure. Thank you, Captain. No problem, Agent. True Sons know how to follow orders. As we try to keep our end, we would work our way towards the Jefferson Trade Center courtyard where we experienced the anomalies Lewis mentioned. Our HUD glitch, an unknown network was detected, and a hunter was spotted. We would also find out that this operation was staged by the Black Tusk as a recruitment exercise for a Jack Bonnie. Bonnie was a former member of Schaefer's BTSU, and as we discovered, a division agent with the classified status. As prepared as he might have been to impress whoever may have been looking, our newly formed alliance would prove too much for Jack. He was an agent. Classified. What the fuck is going on here, Captain? You know nothing, Kelso? If you finally figure out what the hell we're really up against, you know where to find me. Talk to your boy. You're gonna need our help. My boy? Who the fuck is my boy? There are certainly more questions than answers at this point. Things which perhaps we'll need to discuss in another brief. But in short, Lewis was right. There is a bigger threat out there. <laughs>